Hey you guys, my name is Horace Park with A1 Compressors. Today we're going to show you some videos of the most commonly asked questions that come into us. Okay guys, what we're going to do today is change this K-model valve plate. First thing we're going to do is front seat our suction and discharge valves. Next thing we're going to do is let the pressure off of it. This is our mocked up condition unit, so it won't have any pressure on it, but we'll just kind of pretend like it does. How does that sound? All right, after that, we're going to remove the cylinder head. I'm lucky I have an impact wrench. You probably, you probably won't. But then again, how boring would it be to see me remove all of these head bolts by hand? All right, we're going to remove the cylinder head. We're going to remove the head gasket. Of course, this one's a new compressor, so the gasket came off easy. You guys are going to have a hard time scraping it off. So you're going to have to use a scraper to make sure that this, this head surface is completely clean. Next, we're going to tap up and remove the valve plate. Always be real careful removing the valve plate. There are guide, guide pins for the suction valves and guide pins here. Then we're going to remove the valve plate gasket here. Set it aside and then we're going to take our old valve plate and discard it. We're going to remove the suction valves. We're going to remove the crimp pads. Unless your pins come out easy, these will, they're, they're new. I don't recommend re replacing those pins if, you can, if they're hard to come out. If you damage them or you break one off and you can't get it out, you're going to have to change the compressor because they're case hardened steel pins. After that, we've got our surfaces all clean. We're going to scrape that and make sure that this surface must be completely clean of gasket material. And this surface must be completely, completely clean of gasket material. Next, we're going to take our A1 K model valve plate. Remove it. We're going to remove our suction valves and our crimp pads. We're going to put our crimp pads on. These are to stop the cylinder wall from actually cutting this valve reed in two. Now we're going to find the correct one. As you notice, there's four reeds and we only need two. The difference is there's a short reed and a long reed. The one you want to use, I'm going to put the wrong one on first. There they go. This is the wrong one because the suction reed does not match the landing completely. This would be the correct one. It matches the landing over here. Don't you just let it. Now that we have our suction reeds on and our crimp pad on, we're going to find the correct gasket for the valve plate. This is the most important part of changing out a valve plate. If you don't remember anything, just remember that you've got to put the right gasket on. I'm going to show you the wrong one to start with. This one here hangs over or outside the cylinder wall. That's the wrong gasket. Do not use that one. That completely kills the efficiency of the compressor. Then we're going to find one here that's actually going to be too small and it will hang over into the cylinder wall. That will knock like crazy when you put it on. It's the wrong gasket. The gasket that we want, guys, is the one that matches the cylinder wall bore completely. This one here hangs over the cylinder wall. So we're just going to discard all these gaskets till we find the correct one that matches the cylinder wall. As you notice, there was five gaskets in this kit because there's five different bores of the compressor. I believe this one's going to be the correct one instead of sitting here trying all four because it matches the, the cylinder wall bore exactly. It does not hang outside the cylinder wall and it does not hang inside the cylinder wall. 
You can forget everything I've said earlier in this hole or anything you saw. You've got to remember to put the correct valve plate gasket on the correct cylinder wall to match the cylinder wall. We're going to install our valve plate. When you're installing the valve plate, always make sure that the guide pins, the holes in the valve plate for your guide pins, or this match. This little tab will stick out on all your coping valve plates. Most of them are going to have a little tab that sticks out, your reed style, and it will stick out so it gives you access to, to tap it up real lightly. Next we're going to install our cylinder head gasket. And then we're going to wipe, make sure our cylinder is clean of material. And reinstall the head. Torque those to about 20 foot pounds if you want to torque them to a tor with a torque wrench or just get them good and snug. And snow a quarter cap. Backseat our discharge valve. Usually I backseat the discharge valve first because I usually have my gauge on the suction valve. And if I do, if I have everything correct, your discharge gas should not bypass and come back into your suction cavity. So we're going to open the discharge valve first. We see that there's no get no pressure coming out on the suction side, which is, makes it right. Then we're going to open our suction valve all the way up, backseat it. Put our caps on. After we've made sure the, the compressor charge or refrigerant is correct, normally you won't lose enough refrigerant to worry about, but that's changing the K model valve plate. Any questions, just give us a call. Hey you guys, thanks for watching the A1 Technical videos. We will have more to come at a later date.